here's the greatest thing that I want people to know about Kobe Bryant. He could have had 71. He could have had 91. The main thing I want everybody to take away from that game is that man's discipline. And that's why when people try to tease me, I'm like, um, we held him under 100. What do you mean? What was it like the first time you went up against Kobe Bryant and had to guard him? 1994 is when I got picked. So that summer, in order to like not go back to the neighborhood and kind of start maturing, I got a place in California. And that's when I started playing basketball at the UCLA men's gym. Anybody that came through LA during that period of time, I got a chance to see them ball. And all of a sudden, we're up there playing and a young kid named Kobe shows up because he just got drafted by the Lakers. And everybody then was still talking about the fact that Jerry West said he had the greatest workout that he had ever seen. And so initially when he said that, the Lakers had Shaq, Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones on the team. That backcourt, they both made the all-star team. And so to even add Kobe to that mix, everybody was like, whoa, they got the nerve to draft the guard. That's the first thing that everybody was saying. And so when he came to the gym, there, there was a little, there was a buzz around him. And then all of a sudden, he got a couple of chances to like get the ball and do his thing went to the basket and boomed out on everybody. Boom! He gained everybody respect from the beginning. And here's another thing that happened. So everybody's playing in the morning. Da, 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 whatever, whatever. And so Kobe and I, afterwards, we went to this little spot in Santa Monica. You know, we were trying to be athletes. It's like, you know, after you work out, you know, athletes, they go get in the hot tub, you know, they go, you know, drink water and these, you know, special juices and whatever, whatever. When we got done, I was ready to go kick it in LA. He went back to the gym and I didn't realize the entire time that they set it up that when we was hooping during the day, he was going back at night. And that's when I knew that he really was gonna be a, 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 not only a special player, but also like bring a level of discipline and work ethic that really was just taking the game to a Michael Jordan type, you know, level of, you know, be, being immersed in the game 24-7, 365. How soon, Jalen, while he's already in the NBA, did you start to notice, oh, he is, his game is, is rounding out in a way that maybe I didn't even anticipate, even though you did see very early on that he had the work ethic. Right from the beginning. But here's his problem. He already had established vets on his team that were stars in their own right. And I love Shaq just like you do. But if you look at his history, Mahmoud abdul Raul, Penny Hardaway, he always found a way to feud with the other star on the team. That was an absolute fact. And so that summer, I don't think I'm breaking any news here. They had an altercation, a physical altercation. And clearly who's gonna win one of those with Shaft. Right. And so when that happened, I remember saying, that ain't gonna end well. And so you in LA, those guys are the men on the team. And then every time it's like, go put in Kobe, their shoulders slump. Like, oh, here we go. You know, the teacher's pet, you know, got to put him in the game. And the crowd would go crazy. So it was unique playing on the opposite team, seeing how that dynamic was, trying to keep him as the young fella on the squad while the coaching staff, the management, and the fans knew that he had something special that couldn't be contained. You eventually faced him in the finals in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, how did you guys approach guarding him individually and as a team? One of the things that happened in my career, I don't think it's cute or cool. I'm not proud of it. Playing in that series, Kobe went up for a jump shot because this was probably game four. And the reason why this ended up happening, because games one, two, and three, I realized that Reggie, Mark, Mullen, me, Travis, we can't guard him. He went up for a jump shot 
and I purposely act like I was contesting the shot and made him come down on my foot. And in my mind, I didn't want him to clearly break his ankle, but in my mind, it'd be great if he missed these next three games. We have a we have a better chance to win. And in true Kobe fashion, this dude only missed one game. It became a signature moment when he returned in his early career because at Indiana, Shaq fouls out in the fourth quarter. And there's the footage of Kobe Bryant making a couple of jump shots and he does the point to the ground, get down the lay down motion that a lot of people see LeBron James doing now. But Kobe was actually the first person to do that. And it was crazy because he was fighting against Michael Jordan's legacy. He was fighting against his teammates and then he was fighting against the opponent. So when that shot went in, he wasn't even like talking trash to the Pacers. That was for his bench. I can hear what Phil Luton was saying. I can hear what players on the bench were saying. Pass the ball, move it, keep it going. Da 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 da. He like, I got this. And so that championship started to validate his greatness. The 81 point game, when he's rolling, at what point do you say to yourself, I don't know what I can do to stop him at this point? So here's the greatest thing that I want people to know about Kobe Bryant. And I bring up the 2000 finals when I intentionally tried to injure him as basketball karma 101. Kobe Bryant, when you watch that game, I want everybody to go back and watch that game. I don't care if he had 40. I don't care if he had 50. I don't care if he had 60. He wasn't doing airplane wings around the court. He wasn't thumping his chest and pointing up at the sky. He wasn't jumping in nobody's face and saying nothing. As a matter of fact, he didn't say a word. And you know what else? He didn't make no highlights. When people show that game, they show Kobe walking to the bench, putting one finger in the air. Or they show him making a three over me. Or they show him like getting a steal and double pump, putting it behind his head, dunking on the breakaway. Because it was so like all time great that he didn't need highlights. But the most important thing that he did that day, he never talked trash and he never made it about him. And that's who Kobe, that, that's the Mamba mentality. Everybody talk about like, what's the Mamba mentality? That game, everybody wants to talk about the numbers. He could have had 71, he could have had 91. The main thing I want everybody to take away from that game is that man's discipline. That man's focus. And so as a professional on other teams, George, you know what you gotta do? You gotta take it. And that's why when people try to tease me, I'm like, um, we held him under 100. What do you <laughs> yeah. mean? Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. He, he, he's the remix to Michael Jordan. If I have a score 44 in the game, I'm mad he didn't have 88. That game embodies his all-time greatness for sure. The times he was most locked in, which is always, he's always locked in, right? But when he was really cooking, they knew, um, they knew even pregame because they said that there were times where he'd, you know, he'd fraternize a little bit in pregame or if you hit a shot, he'd say like, hey man, nice shot or whatever. But the days where he didn't say a word to you, that's when you knew you were in trouble. Everything that people say that they like about the old school game, he didn't fraternize with, you ain't got no footage of Kobe exchanging jerseys after the game. You ain't got no footage of him putting his jersey up, trying to talk to the guy he played with last year or somebody that has the same agent as him. There's no footage of him doing that. He was comfortable with being enemies with everybody in the league. I ain't trying to be friends with none of y'all. I saw how when Shaq left, everybody was on his side. So I ain't dealing with none of y'all. That's how his approach was. So him just saying, what's up to you? That's just because he could talk. He didn't even want to do that. How did you and him eventually become friends? Like, when did that transformation happen? Obviously, we met when he first got into the league. I think we started to become more friends when I started to work in the media. When they started to realize, you know, 95% of the things, but you only saying 5% of what you really know. And when he realized that I was like that, Oh man, he texts me about whatever, call me about whatever. I'm on TV. There's so many times I'm doing Sports Center, I'm doing J&J, &J, he texting me, he calling me, he doing all of that. 
Like I was standing right next to him at his camp when he first talked to Dwight Howard. And I'm gonna say this now because they made amends. I've never said this before on wax. When he got off the phone with Dwight Howard, cause I know what that conversation was. I was standing right there. Dwight was excited. He was asking him about LA. He was asking him about um, how he was gonna help him make him better. He asked him, you know, about off the court. He asked him about everything. After he asked all of those questions, you know what Kobe say? I'm gonna show you mofo how to get championships. What do you think about that? But here's the part that is the kicker that I would never say unless they made up. I was at his basketball camp. I spoke at his basketball camp, I was standing right next to him. He sent shoes to my students for me doing it. He got off the phone with Dwight Howard. He said, his head ain't in the right place, this ain't gonna work. And it didn't work. For me, seeing him go from being like somebody that came into the league 17, 18 years old to being an accomplished entrepreneur and winning awards with it, with his production company. One of the guys that worked on Jalen and Jacoby for a long time, just so you know, he talking to me about our show and then he go snatch one of the people off our show <laughs> yeah. to work for his production company. I was like, you owe me one. <laughs> and that's why I put together that 81 dollars video for him. So I don't know if you saw the thing on Twitter about your statue. Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Man. Yeah, I figured that, me either. A drink, Mr. Bryant? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a, a vodka martini. How many dollars would you like? 81. Really? <laughs> nah, man, I'm just playing. Just two. Joke for him. At first, he was like, uh, he didn't know if he wanted to clown me like that. He's like, I got love for y'all. I want to kind of di dish you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, dog. It's all good. And so I'm glad there are going to be so many people that have voices on the Kobe Bryant legacy. And I'm extremely proud that I was a part of that 81 point game and playing against him in the NBA Finals and a part of that video because of those are going to be notable things that continue to happen. And to me, it's an honor to be a footnote, a bug on the windshield, um, or bump in the road, like whatever you want to call me for the legacy of Kobe Bryant because any tribute that the world has for him, number eight, number 24, statues, all of that, he, he, he definitely deserves it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.